Good evening. How are you, Sandra Nicole? Oh, sorry. Good evening, teacher. How are you today? Doing great. And you? Oops. <laughs> Greatly, too. Did you have a nice weekend? <sighs> well, um, very, very busy weekend, you know. Really? really? Yes. I don't, I don't get a rest. Never. <laughs> <laughs> and what were you well, doing? Well, it, Let's see. On Friday, uh, we have to go to um attack well, Las Flores route, you know, mm -hmm. with a with a group of people uh, that who needed a a travel there. Yeah. Okay. Then it then and on on Saturday we went to um to try with the IPPS registrations. And we make a, a, a big lines there, but nothing at all was good. Uh, anyway, um, in the afternoon, oops, I don't remember how much, um, how much thing I, I did. Um, I don't remember. Well, Saturday afternoon, but I was very, very busy. On Sunday, I had to teach at the Bible, Biblical school because I am a Biblical school teacher. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so I, uh -huh. pretty busy, Sorry. actually, huh? Like quite a few things do, that you did. <laughs> yes. Yes. And I wanted to study, you know, and I couldn't. I, I Today, I went again to the to the um, Confia and Coursera and the other IPSPA. And, well, nothing was good, good anyway, but... Well, uh, at least I tried, and my husband wanted me to go with him to the airport to, uh, this afternoon, but I, uh, I, I told him I, I need to study a little bit list, so I can't go. <laughs> so, <laughs> yes, that is why I'm here. Okay, all right. If not, you would go to the airport in this moment, huh? Yes, yes, of course. Wow. Mm -hmm. Well, I see quite busy, quite busy, Sandra. I hope yeah. everybody else had a nice weekend. Everybody had a good weekend? Yes. Hello? Yes, Evelyn? Walter, yes. more or less, not too good, Walter. What happened? Yes, I got flu <laughs> I was lying down all weekend. <laughs> yeah, yeah. it's not a good way to relax. Yeah. <laughs> it's better to, you know... Uh, yeah. get sick Monday through Friday. That way you have off of work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Not on the weekends. All right. Well, thank you guys so much for connecting today. We're going to go ahead and get started with a couple of things. Um, first thing we're going to start off this week is with our new topic. This week, we have the second unit, the second lesson, which is the introduction to listening. So in this section is listening. So Remember, what do we have this week? Uh, we're going to be, last week was reading. This week, we're going to have a little bit of listening. We're going to try to get into it, make sure that we understand a couple of techniques that help us out with listening. Okay. So let's take a moment. Let's start off here. As in the reading section, here you will find challenges about listening. Welcome to the listening section. As in the reading section, here you will find challenges about listening, about the listening section, two types of listening questions, listening practice. Okay, so we're going to have two types of listening practice. Here questions, we... listening practice. That's the most important. This is what we're going to be looking at during the unit. The different, we're going to study a little bit about what are some of the difficulties and how to overcome them. Um, the type of questions we have to be careful for, and then, of course, the opportunity to practice trying to improve listening. So here we have, first, the challenges. What are some problems when we have, when we do our listening? Challenges of listening. When listening, you must concentrate and focus your attention on the passage. You need to be familiar with the type of questions on the test. Read and listen carefully. 
answer all the questions. You may take notes as you listen. Okay. So the most important is when you're listening, try to get the main ideas. We're going to always try to get some information. Um, of course, there are different types of techniques depending on the type of question you have. But similar to the reading, always, whenever possible, try to, you have to learn to read quickly because you need to read the questions before you listen. Many times the listening is programmed exactly the amount that it's going to take. You're not going to have the instructor speaking or anything. It is, everything is recorded. All you have to do is listen. So immediately, soon as you get the questions, read the questions because you need to know what you need to focus on. What is the purpose of the listening? That is the first thing we're going to have, okay? Let's take a look at a couple of things that they mentioned as far as the listening. What else do they give us? About the listening section. The listening section on the TOEFL test measures your ability to understand spoken English. You will hear parts of a conversation or lectures lasting from three to five minutes. Each listening passage is followed by five or six questions. Again, no prior knowledge is necessary. Okay. So, like always, prior knowledge is not necessary. So that means you don't need prior knowledge. But what do you need? Definitely one of the things that you always need is vocabulary. Because if you don't have the vocabulary, it's very difficult to understand what they're talking about, what is happening, right? This is the hardest part of the listening. Always is great, but it's really hard. Uh, I don't understand what's happening, what's going on, okay? So let's take a look. Let's try it out. Before we do any listening exercises, any questions? No. no. So it's very good. The idea is always that. Always try to practice the listening. Um, try to listen to different topics, topics that are not common for you. This is going to help you when you have to do exercises. Because when you listen to common things like movies or videos or music, the people say, ah, I watch movies in English. It's not going to help you. Not because it's bad, but because the TOEFL exam is not the common language. It is academic language, academic vocabulary. It's different types of topics similar to the reading. So we need to be clear that you have each of those, right? Because if you don't, it's going to be a little hard. Okay. So before we get to it, it's just loading a second. Let's take a look at it, make sure that we're okay. Okay, so here we have a GIST content and GIST purpose question. Okay, does anybody know what is GIST? Have you ever heard this topic, GIST? No. No? Okay, so GIST is that you get the main ideas. Mm -hmm. Just is like you have the main ideas about it. Um, maybe you hear an order, for example, oh, hi, I like to get an anchovy and pepperoni pizza. Um, on the side, I like to get some breadsticks. Okay. The gist is what is the conversation about? Oh, it's about pizza. That is the gist, the main idea. Then we have the other type of questions that are very specific. That is the detailed questions. The detailed questions is, oh, what did he order on the pizza? What was the extra? That is the detailed questions. That's going to be the difference. It's okay, the different types? Yes. Yes? yes? Okay. Let's try the first one. Let's try it together, the gist, so we can get a couple of ideas. Let's begin with GIST content and GIST purpose questions. Remember that the GIST of something is the main point or key idea. GIST content questions ask you to identify the main topic or idea of the listening conversation or lecture. GIST purpose questions ask you to identify 
what the main purpose of the conversation or lecture is. You can recognize just content and just purpose questions because they use phrases like mainly about, mainly discussing, why this is student, or what is the main purpose. Here are two things to keep in mind when answering just content and just purpose questions. In the listening section, there will always be either a just content question or a just purpose question, but never both. This question will always be the first question after listening to the passage. Also, sometimes the lectures and the conversations can have two main ideas. In this case, the just content or just purpose questions may ask you to choose two of the four answer options instead of just one. Let's look at some samples of just content and just purpose questions. Okay, let's take a look at this. The first thing that we need to do is always read the question first. Don't worry about it, but always read the question first. Okay, so why does the professor say this? Uh -huh. So we need to understand we're going to hear something and we need to identify why the professor is mentioning that. What is the purpose? Is it to joke with the class, to ask the class for their patience, to make excuses for the situation or to encourage the students to make sketches? We're going to hear, so please bear with me. Why did the, uh, sorry, why did the instructor or the professor say that? Let's take a look. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's read it together to make sure we get clear, okay? Ideas. Who would like to read the man? Who would like to be the woman? I'm not sure if you can see it, but I hope so. I'd like to read the woman. Thank you very much. And who would like to read the man? Walter. <laughs> Thank you for volunteering, Walter. Excellent. Okay, Walter. It's good to have friends. Okay. Dr. Johnson, will you, um, I need you signature um, this permission form so that I can get in the chemistry 205 because, because my grade for, pre, I can see very well. I imagine it's a little bit difficult. Prerequisite mm -hmm. uh, course was low. Well, well, a low, a low grade indicates that you don't understand essential concepts. Are you up to taking the course? I think so, my brother. Um, kind of uh, tutor me over the summer. We went back over all the material. I think have a good grasp. grasp of it now. Good. You read in here, okay? Uh, listen again to part of the lecture, then answer the questions, okay? What do we hear, Walter? Oh, sorry, uh, Sandra, what do we hear? Well, well, mm -hmm. well, a low grade indicates that you don't understand the essential concepts. Are you up to taking the course? Mm. Mm. You read in here, what does the professor mean when she says this? Are you up to taking the course? What does that mean? Walter, please read the options. Okay. Letter A, she is refusing to sign the permission form for the men to register for chemistry. Letter mm -hmm. B, she is concerned the men doesn't have the background knowledge to do well. Letter C, she doesn't have confidence in the brother's teach, teaching abilities. Uh, abilities, yeah. Abilities, yes. She wants the men to go back over the prerequisite course materials. Okay. So in this case, she says, are you up to taking the course? because she is letter B. The woman is concerned the man, the man doesn't have the background knowledge to do well. She is not refusing. She doesn't say, no, I don't want to. She asks, mm, it's similar to, are you sure? 
Uh, that is the idea up to taking the course. This is important because if we are not clear what is up to, we can get very confused. These are part of the phrasal verbs that are necessary to understand context. Okay. It's okay the type of question it is? Yes. Okay. So when we listen, notice we didn't have to listen for uh, the name of the class. What grade? What course is it? Uh, what? No, we're trying to get the main idea. Remember, the gist is not specific, is the main idea. What is the main conversation? Is they are talking about a class, they are talking about registering, they are talking about dropping out of the class or leaving or quit. That is the idea of gist types of questions is what is the purpose of the conversation? It's okay, the idea, gist type of questions? More or less. Okay, all right, don't worry. It's with practice. With practice, we're gonna get it. Let's try it, let's, don't worry. We're gonna get better at it the more that we practice. Okay, so now that we understand the one type of questions, Let's take a look at the second type. And those are the detailed questions. In this, we do have to pay quite a bit of attention to make sure we understand it. Now let's talk about detailed questions. Detailed questions ask you about information that is stated in a small part of the passage. They generally focus on the who, what, when, where, and why. Detailed questions usually take one of these formats. According to the paragraph X, occurred because, according to paragraph X, which is true of, the author's description of, mentions which of the following. There are two major traps that people fall into on detailed questions. Both of them can be avoided if you're careful not to choose an answer simply because it contains keywords from the passage. The first trap is to choose a true statement that was contained in the passage, but that doesn't answer the question. The second mistake people make is to accidentally choose an answer that contains a lot of words from the passage, but actually it states a different idea or changes the relationships between things. For example, Sleeping makes me happy is very different from happiness makes me sleep. So what are they trying to tell you here is that is very common the trick. The trick is that you will hear, oh, oh, I love it. What my favorite things to do on my holidays are sleeping. Sleeping makes me. And then you listen, oh, happiness makes me sleep. Ah, and you hear the words from the conversation and you say, ah, this is the answer. But remember, it's not only the answer. Make sure to read and be clear what the sentence is saying because it's not the same. Sleeping makes me happy and happiness makes me sleep, right? In one, in the first one, is when the person sleeps, they are happy. And the other is anytime they are happy, oh, they go to sleep is the opposite ideas. Let's work on a sample question. Listen to the audio program about a conversation and try to get the right answer. I dropped my physics course because I discovered it didn't meet my degree requirements. You wouldn't know anyone in the class who'd like to buy the course book, would you? Not offhand, but if you bought it new and kept the receipt, I'm sure you could get your money back or exchange it for one you do need. Really? I could do that, could I? Well, yeah, if it's within a reasonable period of time. Listen again to part of the conversation. Then answer the question. Not offhand, but if you bought it new and kept the receipt, I'm sure you could get your money back or exchange it for one you do need. Really? I could do that, could I? What is the man doing when he says this? Really? I could do that. Could I? What do you so what do you think? What does that mean? What does he say? A, B, C, or D? B, 
please put your answer in the chat. Please put your answer in the chat. Everybody, everybody in the chat. Let's take a look. That way nobody copies. We can see. It's your answer. Why does the man say that? Okay. Evelyn, I have Evelyn's answer. Okay. The others, remember, this is the listening. You don't have time to be waiting and waiting and waiting. You have to put your answer immediately. And then it's going to begin the next one. Okay. Okay. I see everybody thinks it's letter D. Very nice. Okay. Nobody has a different answer. Okay. Good. Very nice. Okay. Are you able to get it? That's right. By him using a talk question at the very end, we understand he's confirming his understanding about what the woman told him. Therefore, choice D is correct. Very good. How do we know? One more time. Here is the tip how we know. The conversation. Then answer the question. Not offhand, but if you bought it new and kept the receipt, I'm sure you could get your money back or exchange it for one you do need. Really? I could do that, could I? What is the man? That is the tag question. Could I? Could I always is to check information. <gasps> Am I? Could I? Did I? Would I? All of those types of intonation is only to confirm information. That's how we learned that it was correct answer D. Checking the information. Is that okay? Yeah. Yes. 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 Okay. So, how do you feel? You feel ready? Let's try. Let's try it. Let's. That's what I love. I love that attitude. The attitude. Hey, I don't know, but ah, by trying, maybe yes. Oh, look, bad oh, game. Thank God. Let me try one more. Maybe something happened with my inter. Mm hmm. Hopefully it's my internet and not the platform, right? I got the same message. <laughs> Did you? Yes. Oh. Yes, I have the same problem. Okay, so maybe it is the platform. Okay, let me try. Okay, let's try it this way one more. Bad gateway. Oh. Mm. Okay. Let me report it in this moment. That way they can take a look. Okay. Sorry. All right, so that's going to be a little bit interesting. Let me see if I can try to do it in another format. And if not, don't worry, I have more things that we can practice. It's not going to be an issue. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it, it seems like it's going to be an issue for um, for most people. So let me just load a, it's in another activity. And then I will help you out. Okay. Let me make sure. I remember when we left school. Okay. All right, guys. My apologies for that. In this moment, uh, in the chat, you can see a link, and that link is going to allow us to practice a little bit. Um, this is a listening practice. So we're going to go ahead, listen. Okay, and then we have to answer six questions about this. We're going to try it with our partners. Please make sure that you open it or copy the link before we go to the groups, because you know that when we go to the groups, 
it disappears, okay? So open the link, make sure you have access to it. Are you ready? Yes, sir. Okay, perfect. Yes, so yes. we have a few minutes with our partner. We want to answer that six questions. Okay, now remember, you're going to have just a listening. Uh, try to listen one time and answer the questions. But if necessary, listen again. It's okay. Daniel, are you having some problems? It's my problem with my internet, but I'll try. I consider that it's important. First, read the question that mm -hmm. why did Anna decide to go to the mm -hmm. room to cut, catch up her old schoolmate to find out how the school has changed or to tell people about her successes? And then let's listening to an okay let's listen i remember when we left school we were all eager to meet up at a reunion 10 or 20 years down the line we said we'd want to see how we've changed but let's face it we were all looking forward to a chance to brag about our achievements that doesn't appeal to me anymore nor do i really care about hanging out with people from my past i've kept up with the ones i really care about i was more curious about the place itself it had always been so old-fashioned. I wondered if it had remained that way or moved on. At first, the atmosphere was rather awkward. I paired off with a close friend, Emily, and we updated each other on life. Around us, some people were squealing with joy as they met long-lost friends and reminiscing, while others who had come and then realised they didn't know anyone very well were making polite small talk in a very restrained way. Neither of those options was attractive to me, but Emily eventually said that we should mingle, so I did. Fortunately, then one of the organisers announced that we were going to play a game. We had to write down our memories and guess who had written them. You'd think it would fall flat, because most people barely knew each other, but actually, it was a good icebreaker. After that, people were no longer pretending to be interested in each other's careers and families. We knew what to talk about. You know, events, classrooms, teachers, and so on. And it brought home what we had in common and also what set us apart because people had responded differently to what was basically the same experience. 
Naturally, that led to a discussion about what the school had done well and what it should have done differently. Interestingly, we all used to think the school was far too strict, but now I appreciate that that approach taught me discipline. I also have always thought the school had too few options. It prepared everyone for the academic route to university. And to be fair, it did that very well. Pretty much everyone got in. But as far as preparation for the workplace goes, there was none of that. It seemed they were just passing the buck. Later on, we had a tour, and the head teacher gave us an update on the school's facilities and the latest news. She spoke proudly of the new history block, the computer laboratories, and the school's excellence and recognition in music. What struck me, though, is how little had changed. Despite all these modern updates, the school ethos is still to help teenagers excel in activities that are somewhat outdated, rather than teaching the kind of skills that are valued today. Although it wasn't the best evening of my life, the reunion was a good opportunity to reflect. After all, the school taught me to be hardworking and capable, and I've always been aware of the benefits that has brought me. I'm pleased to have met up with my old classmates too. It was interesting to see how our shared education has shaped everyone differently. So, so old-fashioned. I wonder if it remained that way or moved on. At first, the atmosphere was rather awkward. I paired off with a close friend, Emily, and we updated each other on life. Around us, some people were squealing with joy as they met long-lost friends and reminiscing, while others who had come and then realised they didn't know anyone very well were making polite small talk in a very restrained way. Neither of those options was attractive to me, but Emily eventually said that we should mingle, so I did. Fortunately, then one of the organisers announced that we were going to play a game. We had to write down our memories and guess who had written them. You'd think it would fall flat because most people barely knew each other, but actually, it was a good icebreaker. After that, people were no longer pretending to be interested in each other's careers and families. We knew what to talk about. You know, events, classrooms, teachers, and so on. And it brought home what we had in common, and also what set us apart, because people had responded differently to what was basically the same experience. Naturally, that led to a discussion about what the school had done well, and what it should have done differently. Interestingly, we all used to think the school was far too strict, but now I appreciate that that approach taught me discipline. I also have always thought the school had too few options. It prepared everyone for the academic route to university, and to be fair, it did that very well. Pretty much everyone got in. But as far as preparation for the workplace goes, there was none of that. It seemed they were just passing the buck. Later on, we had a tour, and the head book in a very restrained way. Neither of those options was attractive to me, but Emily eventually said that we should mingle, so I did. Fortunately, then one of the organisers announced that we were going to play a game. We had to write down our memories, and guess who had written them? You'd think it would fall flat, because most people barely knew each other, but actually, it was a good icebreaker. After that, people were no longer pretending to be interested in each other's careers and families. We knew what to talk about. You know, events, classrooms teachers and so on and it brought home what we had in common and also what set us apart because people had responded differently to what was basically the same experience naturally that led to a discussion about what the school had done well and what it should have done differently interestingly we all used to think the school was far too strict but now i appreciate that that approach taught me discipline i also have always thought the school had too few options it prepared Mm, were you guys able to to find out the answer? Mm -hmm. I, 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 I get confused with the letter A and the letter B. Okay, I think the... Probably in this question, you have been, we are here. Uh, this letter uh, uh, G, uh, letter C, letter C, question number six. 
how has the experience changed Anna's feeling about school? Her memory of school has become more positive because when she is, she is talking about the school, uh, talk about the positive things happening in the schools. I believe that. Mm. Um, I guess, uh, what letter did, did you say? In my and opinion, was... in my opinion, I consider the answer, the correct answer is letter C. Her memory of school has become more positive. Okay. So, how did you do with your partners? How do you feel? Quite a bit of information, right? Yes. Sir. She, she speaks very fast, Mister. Okay. And you have to get used to it because in the exam, they're not going to speak slow. In the exam, they're going to speak normal. It's a British English teacher. Hmm? It's a British English. Also British English, yes. Or Canadian English. Or American yeah. English. Or Australian English. Yeah. Yeah. So, it's in fact, it's, uh, it's just a matter of trying to get used to the different types. The different types of listening that we have. So, what do we think? Did we get most of it or no? Were you able to complete it? No, we weren't. No. 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 Okay. No. No. Okay. No. Now, if we look at it, how long does the the listening takes? How long? A lot of time. The three listening minutes. Is, three minutes. The listening is three minutes, three minutes, but you had ten minutes to complete. Okay. It's our first experience, teacher. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> and, and that's the and that's the important. The important is because in class, I know that you listen two times. I know that you discuss, but in the exam, you don't have a moment to think. You don't have a moment to, ah, let me listen. No, the, and the listening continue, and the listening continue, more or less. Okay, great. Now we're going to practice from the book, for our, from our platform. We're going to try a little bit of it. Now we have the idea. We're going to practice the actual listening. The voice that you heard in the other one is similar. You're going to get in many times a little image like the one here, right? Usually you're going to find a picture or something that you can see to help you associate. It's nothing important, but it's just for you to have the idea of something to look at. That's why they give it to you, just to give you something to look at. Okay, so... What are we going to listen for? Number one is the gist. What's number one? The gist. How do we know? Because it says mainly. Mainly is, that's it. What are the main ideas? That is the first one. Number two, why does the professor mention the introduction of machinery? Oh, this means we have to listen for specific details. First, read the question and the options. Okay, then we listen and try. Here is where you have to learn to do it quickly because when they begin the listening, they continue. They don't stop. It's not that they pause for you to answer the question. They answer right away. Okay, let's try it together. Carlos, can you read number one and the answers? Julio, can you read number two and the answers, the options? All right. Okay, what is the lecture mainly about? A, a method for evaluating outcomes. B, a technique for avoiding controversy. C, a comparison comparison of benefi benefi beneficial, class, mm -hmm. beneficial inputs. D, uh, a formula, formula for this typing failure. Okay, good. First, before we listen, 
are there any parts that you don't understand? Any answers that you don't understand? Beneficla. Right. It should be, I think that they meant to put comparison of beneficial inputs. Ah, oh, beneficial. <laughs> I think so, because beneficla, it doesn't exist. So I think they misspelled it and it should be beneficial. Beneficial, you are right. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, let's read number two. Okay, uh, why does the professor mention introdu the introduction of the machinery? Uh, in the, uh, uh, sorry for that. I would like to apologize because I didn't do this question. I didn't No, resolve. no, no. It's only to read. Only to read. Okay. Read to together. Don't worry, Julio. Read the options, Julio. Julio, read the options. Julio. Julio, 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 César Monge. Julio César Monge. Apagando el micrófono. No va a quitar que te voy a llamar. Julio César Monge. Torres. Torres, Julio. Julio César Monge, Torres. Hey, Julio, what happened, brother? All you have to do is read, not answer. Don't worry. Don't worry. I think Julio got scared. He got scared. And he said, I know. Mejor me apago el micrófono. No contesto. All right, guys. It's not kindergarten. Don't worry. All right. Let's try another one. Don't worry, Julio. We're not going to bother you. It's okay. <laughs> Vanessa is going to help you. Go ahead, Vanessa. Help Julio. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for that. Y ahora sí enciende el micrófono. No, Julio. Give us the options. Or the question yeah, as well. Read, no, just just read the options. Mm -hmm. Okay. A little A to underline the importance of monetary units. A B to help explain how costs and benefits are worked out to show that many machines are too expensive to emphasize the financial side of business decisions. Okay. So we have to listen for two important things. The main reason of the conversation and two, specifically why the professor talks about the introduction of machinery. Are you ready? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes. Let me try one more time. Mm. Listen to part of a lecture in a business studies class. Okay, so we've outlined a number of techniques for effective decision making. Uh, now let's focus on one approach to figuring out how to uh, make good business decisions. Okay, so uh, one way of deciding whether to go ahead with some new investment project is to perform what's known as CBA or cost-benefit analysis. CBA can estimate and total up the money values of both the benefits and costs to a community, institution, or business to establish whether an investment choice is worthwhile. So let's assume you've generated solutions to a business problem and have thought really carefully about which way to go. You think you have the best solution available, but before going ahead with any investment decision, what you need to do is add up the value of the benefits as well as the costs of this action. Now, uh, what I mean by costs and benefits here is always, it's, it's always expressed in monetary terms. So, um, we find out what the cost is in money terms and also what the benefits might be also in money terms. Uh, then, we subtract the costs from the benefits and we can choose whether to go ahead or not. All right, in simple terms, costs 
tend to be what we spend on something. Um, say, for example, a new piece of machinery. And, uh, and benefits are uh, what advantages, expressed in money units, we get over the lifetime of that machinery because of having purchased it as opposed to, well, <laughs> not having it or having some alternative. Um, in, in such a case, we can figure out a fairly simple CBA just by looking at expenses and uh, then subtracting them from the savings brought about by uh, improved, uh, the improvements of introducing the machinery. That would include things like the savings met by not having to pay salaries to employees who previously did the work of the machine. We could add the fact that the machines make fewer mistakes, <laughs> we hope, than human employees so there will be fewer rejected products. But on the other hand, we have to factor in the cost of running the machines, uh, such as maybe the increased electricity bill, the cost of repairs, and of course, the cost of training someone to operate the new equipment. So that much is pretty straightforward. But we also have to think about less tangible, less visible costs and benefits. Cost-benefit analysis really only works if we're careful to add in all the costs and benefits. Uh, costs, especially, are sometimes hidden. For example, in, in paying for this new stuff, we're taking liquid money and spending it, right? So we're no longer paid interest from having that money in a bank or otherwise invested. Okay, so we have to subtract that loss from the benefit side. Then, suppose also that the new machines are noisy. That means soundproofing. That's a cost. Or, or will it take up more space than the replaced workers and therefore require an addition to the building? These are less obvious costs, but they should be factored in to get an accurate picture. When we do CBA in a more public domain, uh, say, on the building of a new road, the calculations can become even more tricky. Although there's some impressive software nowadays that helps us out, of course. So, how do we measure the benefits here? Does the road improve or worsen people's lives? A new road may, for example, uh, damage some wildlife habitat, or some residential community may be inconvenienced by the noise or air pollution. On the other hand, the new road could improve property values by decreasing commuting times. Um, it could also save human lives, since it's safer than the old road. In practice, CBA tries to put a value on all these things, although a lot of people may not like what it says. What it does is try to find out how people really value these apparently subjective things by looking at the financial choices they're prepared to make to gain a benefit or to avoid something on the cost side. In this way, we can put a monetary figure on all benefits and costs. Of course, these calculations can be complex and sometimes controversial, but I want to point out that CBA is a powerful tool and perhaps the most rational way of choosing whether to go ahead with a complex investment decision. As you can see, it's similar to the practice that you did. It's a lot of information and a lot of time. You have to learn how to stay focused and look for that specific answer with all of that information. Okay, so in number one, what is the lecture mainly about? What do you think? This was, imagine this listening was longer than your other listening. This was one question. Well, it was one listening, five minutes and 30 seconds for two questions. What is the lecture mainly about? Maybe C. Maybe C. Okay. Agree. <laughs> Maybe. You agree? Yes. Okay. Yes. 
Okay, okay. Good. Okay, what about number two? Why does the professor mention the introduction of machinery? For me, letter B. Letter B. Say how it's my hook up and make that work out. Yes? Letter B. Letter, letter B. B. Okay, very nice. So, very good. Those are correct. As you can see, it's a lot of listening for two answers, right? You had to listen a lot of information just to get two answers. This is usually the hardest part of the exam, okay? Now, it's very good for most of it, right? Now, we're talking about the first one. And when we're talking about the idea of the, the, the idea of comparison and all of these, we're doing pretty good. Now, we want to make sure that we explain a little bit more here, okay? So... Here is a comparison of beneficial inputs and to help explain how costs and benefits are worked out. Okay. Does anybody disagree? Is there anybody that has a different answer? No, everybody agrees those are the two answers, correct? Yes, yes. Yes, okay. The reason I ask is because number two is correct. Number two, to help explain how costs and benefits are worked out is a correct answer. But number one is not correct. Number one is not the correct answer. So in number one, we are not comparing benefits. Imagine comparing benefits, inputs. No, they talk about benefits, but the lecture is not about uh, benefits. The lecture is how to evaluate different situations. How to evaluate the cost. Letter A. Letter A, exactly. The best answer would be letter A. Just they talk about benefits, but the lecture is not about benefits. It's about how to evaluate. Remember, they talk about the road, they talk about the machines, they talk about the how, they talk about all of the different ways to evaluate and what you would take into account. Not only the good things, but what can be taken into account. That is the part is the difficult when doing listening. Because in listening, you're going to hear many words that sound pretty. Oi, this sounds good, but it's not the correct one. Remember, the most important is stay focused to the question because in the question is the main idea, not what I hear about, right? But what is the main idea or the main questions? How did you feel? Okay. So, yes. So, so? Yes. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. We're ready for number three. We're ready for the next one. Yes. 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 Okay. Yes. Perfect. Jancy, can you please read the question and the options? Okay. Why does the professor say this? She thinks some costs are difficult to see. She does not think that any analysis is compli complicated. 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 She wants students students to understand the loss of money. She does not think all benefits are really benefits. Okay, let's listen. So that much is pretty straightforward. But we also have to think about less tangible, less visible costs and benefits. Hmm. Why does she say that context? Why does she say that comment? One more time. Yes, please. One more time. Here we go. So that much is pretty straightforward. But we also have to think about less tangible, less visible costs and benefits. Letter A. Letter A. 
Okay, I'll let it go. She thinks some costs are difficult to see. Okay. Letter D. Letter D. Okay. Letter B. Letter B. Okay. Letter B. <laughs> Letter B also. Okay. Song of Bill. Uh huh. Okay. Letter C, no, right? Nobody letter C? No. Okay. No. That's excellent. And that's the idea for the exam. First thing is you want to eliminate. You say, no, no, no. Letter C, definitely no. And no. then you need to try to go the others, the other options quickly. So instead of having 25% possibility, now we eliminate letter C and we have 33% possibility. Now, do you think it can be the A, B, or C? Some of you A, some of you B, and some of you C. One more time. Normally, you don't listen three times. You only listen once. But listen, what is she trying to say? So that much is pretty straightforward. But we also have to think about less tangible, less Visible costs and benefits. Mm. Okay. This is a letter. A. Letter A. A. Yeah, because what are we talking about? We're talking about less tangible. That means things you cannot touch, things you cannot feel. Okay. This is the important part. So when we're talking about less tangible or aspects like this, letter A is going to be the one. Don't worry, not always is going to be um, difficult and not always they're going to be easy. Each of them is a little bit different, okay? But this is the idea for today's lecture. In this moment, we don't have enough time for the next part or the next listening, but I'd like us to go ahead and take a moment and discuss for you what do you think is the most difficult thing about the listening be concentrated <laughs> be concentrated okay uh for me i think is that when you have to get the main idea about uh, a listening uh for example uh the the, the speaker talks uh, uh talks a lot in and uh, says a lot of information mm -hmm. and for me i think that sometimes i get confused because like, when you read the answers and then listen to the conversation or the or the listening text uh there are some words that similar to the to the answer and that's why sometimes i like a, i i get confused uh because also there are some answers that sounds sound similar but they have a different meaning and I think in a short time, it's uh, it's really difficult to like to analyze what is what is the difference or what is the correct one. Uh, I guess that's the um, the main uh, the thing that is more challenging for me. Great. So what does that mean? I understand that for Evelyn, she has to learn how to identify information that is not necessary. This is the key. Not all the information is necessary. And she gets confused with too much information. The same. Sometimes this is the purpose. Imagine it's only two questions, but they give you five minutes for the listening. And you are... And only two questions. But this is the important. What information is? One of the techniques that I recommend, if you, if you start to lose focus... If too much, read the question again. Read the question again. Read the question again. That way you say, ah, I focus for this. I'm focused for this. I'm because if not, you begin listening, listening, and finish. ¿Cuál era la pregunta? And then you don't even remember. Yes. <laughs> you don't. It's it's normal because always you finish and speaking, speaking, and then you don't remember. So try to do different techniques. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Don't worry. It's very good. We're going to have the opportunity to practice more. I uh, Do you have access in your platform now? Or do you still have that message from before? Or now it's okay? Yeah. It's okay now. It's okay now? Yes, because I put into the WhatsApp group and they say that they had fixed it. So I want to make sure that it's correct. It's okay now. 
Yes. Yes, it's yes. working. Ah, it's okay. Okay, great. We're going to pause right now. And tomorrow we're going to continue with more listening. The idea is practice mm -hmm. more listening. Remember, the topics are not normal. And this is other. You need to expand your circle of information and what you talk about. So tomorrow we're going to expand a little bit more. Okay? Okay, teacher. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you so much for being you. Me. Have a Thank great you. night. Okay. Thank you. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.